Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I'm here with a big, big book haul. I haven't filmed in so long and in this time I have accumulated a huge amount of books. I recently started working in a bookstore and when I say recently I mean like almost six months now and I get so many books from work, whether that's ones that I buy myself or whether that is ones that I actually get from publishers and things like that or damaged copies but basically I will eventually die under a pile of unread books because I just cannot keep up with the amount of books I read versus how many I am getting. So let's get started. I have 87 books that I have recently got. I don't want to make this video way too long for you guys so I'm going to kind of be quick going through them. I'm not going to talk about every single book in this video. I have read some of these already so I'm going to start off talking to you guys about the books that I have read and that I got in this time. So first up we have An Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard. I bought this book for the stunning cover. It was just sitting on the shelf and finally I was like fine you can come home with me and I didn't bother to read the back of this. So I went to this book completely blind and I was actually really pleasantly surprised. So I gave it about a four, four and a half star rating out of five. Um, basically just set in this world, modern day world, where you have witches and they have their own hierarchy. So every couple of decades all the houses will fight together. Whoever came out on top ruled the entire magical world. So once again that has happened and all these different houses and all these different characters are just told from multiple perspectives. Um, have to basically battle it out to find out who is going to rule the hierarchy. But it's a really dark story. There are twisted tales in this and I really, really enjoyed it. It is a great fantasy. Um, there's one aspect of the book that I didn't like, but other than that, it was pretty amazing and the characters themselves were flawed, realistic and just wonderful. I literally just stayed up like four hours past my bedtime to finish this book last night. I only started it yesterday and it is the last of a trilogy, but it was so good and I just wanted to know what happened and that is Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. The first book in this trilogy is Rebel of the Sands and I honestly loved it so, so much. So I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars and if you guys are looking for a really amazing young adult read, I definitely recommend picking this one up. This is a fantasy trilogy and it has so many amazing aspects in it, from these sunny covers to amazing characters, fantastic writing, and even better plotline. I highly recommend it. Life Like by Jay Kristoff. This was amazing. I absolutely loved this book. Um, when I first started it, I was the kind of bit like iffy. I wasn't too sure. There was like so much happening that I was like kind of intimidated by the story. But then you very quickly get sucked into this. Basically from the first chapter, you will not want to put this book down. It is an epic sci-fi. Like going back to like classic sci-fi novels it is one that I really enjoyed and the ending I just could not pick it from afar at all. But if you guys do like anything by Jay Kristoff definitely pick it up. If you like sci-fi definitely pick it up. If you trust my reviews pick it up. And while we're on the topic of Jay Kristoff, we have Obsidio, which is the third book in the Illuminae Files. This one is by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. And I probably rate this one out of the trilogy my least favourite in saying that I obviously did enjoy the story. I love the Illuminae Files, but the ending of this one just let me down a little bit. Um, I didn't think it stood in the same hype as the first two books deserve. But in saying that, I did love the new characters, and I also feel like there was just too many people's perspectives that this book needed to include that no one really got to go as in-depth as I did with the first two books but I still enjoyed it and I kind of think I might do a reread of the first two soon because I just I just love this whole series. I was also lucky enough to get an ARC of Whisper by Lynette Noni. I was very excited about this. I absolutely love Lynette Noni's books. Um, but with Whisper I was kind of really let down and I hate saying mean things about books which is kind of a lie. <laughs> I actually kind of like talking about bad books because I think that it's a good way that everyone kind of relates to one another. I've definitely bonded over with books with people that I dislike more than books that I like, but I'm getting sidetracked now because I didn't despise this book. I absolutely love Lynette Noni, but the storyline and the characters in this were just not up to par with the usual standards and there were so many kind of flaws that I didn't enjoy it as much as I wish that I could have. Basically you have this girl who has this amazing power that she is scared to use because it can kill so many people, like it is very very dangerous. Um, the words that she speak can come true, so things like, oh I wish everybody was dead and that everybody could die. And so she has been locked up in this like prison kind of place that has been trying to find out if she's magical, trying to get to talk for two years, 
absolutely torturing the shit out of her. And then this guy comes in and he's like, ah, oh, like, I'm gonna take over, I'm gonna help you out. And basically the story ensues. Um, if you guys do want to hear me spoil a rant about this, let me know because I will. Um, but there were just some parts that I couldn't get behind in this. I kind of went through a patch of my reading stage where everything that I read just wasn't very good. And that includes the very hyped up novella, which is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Maas. I, in all fairness, wasn't expecting this to be a novella. I just got lazy and I didn't read about it. I didn't really bother to look at anything. I just kind of assumed it was a book coming out. But it is a novella. It is very short compared to the other books and it follows the gang around the winter solstice. Um, I really liked Feyre in this book. I don't usually care too much about Feyre, but I really liked it and I liked the aspect that she was kind of trying to move on from the war and cope with it and deal with everything as well. But there were definitely parts of this book that were super pointless, characters who were super stupid, um, and a lot of things that just didn't need to be there. This whole book was kind of pointless except for the last chapter. And if you guys would like to once again hear me spoiler rant about this one, let me know because I can go on about it for a while. I also really can't stop buying different editions of series that I like. So I bought the epic 10 year anniversary editions of The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. These are stunning, beautiful black books just like my soul. And I absolutely love this storyline. Um, if you guys do get the chance to read these, these are really good dystopian novels. These books are some of my all time favorites and it's gonna be a movie you seen too so you guys may as well just read the book before the movie because the books are always better. So it follows a young boy called Todd who lives in a town filled with men and you can hear each other's thoughts. That includes Todd's dog Manchie who originally opens up this book saying I need a poo Todd. It's wonderful. I highly recommend it. And then one day when Todd is going to become a man he discovers a really bad secret about all the men that he live with and then he runs into a girl. He has never seen a girl and the worst part is he can't even hear her thoughts. And so this adventure ensues and you get to watch these characters basically run for their lives and it is amazing. Now because my ratio for books is so terrible, all the ones that I'm going to show you now are ones that I have not read yet. So now we have Blue Planet 2, so this is basically about the ocean and the marine life in the world and it is stunning. It is filled with some really really stunning photos in this as well. Look at those, look at those crabs crabbing around. Look at the seal just like killing that fish. Turtle. Just to add to my Lesbian collection of books, I got Little Women by Louisa May Alcott in this stunning, stunning edition. I could not go past this beautiful bright pink book, well, baby pink book, I think that's the colour that people say, but I love it. It is so pretty and like where I stand at work, I can just see this on the back shelf and every day I go in there, I can just see it looking at me and I look back at it and finally I let our relationship become real and I brought her home with me to live forever. I recently discovered Salus and when I was there I picked up these two gorgeous poetry books. This is Australian poetry and short stories. 200 years worth apparently. And I got both of these books for $5.25. Next up I'm going to show you guys my graphic novels. I picked up In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang. I've heard really great things about this book and I've seen a lot of really really stunning artwork. So I thought that I may as well pick it up. Captain Phasma, which is a Star Wars comic, and I'm very excited to get around to reading this. Um, I absolutely love Star Wars, and so I've kind of just like started collecting all different Star Wars comic books because we sell quite a few. So it's just a shame that they cost so much money. Like this one here is $35. I don't have $35. <laughs> then I've also got Dark Times, which is volume 2. This is the Parallels books. This one's also a Star Wars graphic novel. And this one's pretty interesting. It kind of like doesn't follow all the mainstream characters in the movie. So I'm pretty keen to like finish reading these. I could not go past Darth Maul either. I love Darth Maul as a character. And I think he deserves way more screen time and a better storyline. And I hope that they do a spin-off movie for him because... He just deserved better. He was an awesome villain and he just died way too easily. <laughs> and lastly, I also got this Star Wars Darth Vader Color Your Own book. Um, I got this from a book sale and originally I just grabbed it because I thought it was a comic, but it's Color Your Own. So like, you know, it's just pretty cool drawings of Darth Vader and stuff. So yeah, I'm still going to keep that. 
Then we have Piper. This one's by Jay Asher and Jessica Freiberg. Basically, what made me pick up this book was this one sentence on here, which is, what if the boy of your dreams becomes your worst nightmare? So I'm really hoping that, like, the Piper's evil as heck, and this girl's all just like, I'm uh, living in the woods. This is a great life for me. And then he's all, like, charms her and tries to kill her, and then she's trying to kill him. And it's going to be real interesting, but it probably won't be like that at all. Then I also got Clue. I was really intrigued by this. It's basically Cluedo as a graphic novel, and I kind of really love Cluedo um, to the point where I just I just want to throw a Cluedo party. I did it when I was younger once, and it was like super super fun. So I really want to just play Cluedo in real life. I want to be the murderer. The Dry by Jane Harper. I know that this book is fantastic. It is a crime novel, and I know that I'm going to love it. I just need to get around to reading it. Jane Harper, this is her first book that she wrote. She now has Force of Nature out, which once again is absolutely booming. Everyone is in love with it, and I'm really excited. I've heard amazing things, and I recommend it to a lot of people already. I got Cat Person by Kristen Ropinian. I think um, I got this one as a gift and apparently it's really really great so it says it's a bad date that went viral and it's a short story that is about cats and women I think and yes, keen. My Absolute Darling by Gabrielle Talent. So this one is pretty much like a really high literature book. Um, you have a young girl called Turtle. She's been raised by her father. She's been homeschooled by her father. And when she goes to regular school because she's forced to go, she discovers that the way that her father has been mistreating her is not how a child should be treated. So this is a very heavy book from what I understand, but it's also one that is very fulfilling in the end. It's a coming of age story and it's just... One that is really highly acclaimed, so I'm expecting good things out of this one. The June Club YA Book Club, the next book club book is Neverland by Margot McGovern. And this book I'm pretty sure is going to be a really nice contemporary read with a bit of a fantasy twist. So you have a young girl who hasn't really had a very good childhood. Um, I'm pretty sure that she is actually in a mental hospital. Oh, no, she goes to school with damaged teens who are too sick to be in regular school, which is washed out by her psychiatric uncle. So she starts going to school there, but the way that she copes with a lot of things is putting herself into a fantasy world. But I look forward to this one. I think I'm probably going to cry in it. Um, so let, let's look forward to that. Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Once again, this novel has just basically been like selling off the shelves. Everybody's after it, and apparently it is amazing. I got Last Shot, which is a Star Wars novel. This is a Han and Lando novel, and I really can't wait to read it. I absolutely love Lando, so I can't wait. Um, I also haven't watched the new movie Solo yet, but if you guys have watched it, let me know how it is, because I haven't heard very many great reviews and it makes me sad because I kind of love everything Star Wars. Then we also have The Beast Heart by Lee Fair Shalcross. This is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and it's been described to be a very emotional read. It's kind of like the Beast Heart is laid out bare for you in this book and I think it's going to be great. I really like the cover and the shiny like copper of it. Then we've got The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green. Um, Sally Green wrote Half Bad um, and I really enjoyed the first book in that so I'm hoping that I'll enjoy this one as well. Um, if I Tell You by Alicia Tuckerman and this book features two girls falling in love which is what we're all here for um, and it's also signed. I got this signed because she was at one of our book clubs that I went to um, and she was really kind and I just need to actually get around to reading the story but I'm pretty excited. She's a local Australian author too so it's definitely worth looking at. And also with Australian authors, I picked up Tim Winton's new book, The Shepherd's Heart. Um, I actually did an event with him at work, and so once again, I just picked up the copy because I could get a signed copy. And I do that all the time. There we go. This is probably why I have like no money, is because I buy books a lot because I like the way that they look. I also buy a lot of books because if I can get them signed, why wouldn't you get a signed book? And I also have a problem with just buying any book that someone says is good, even if I don't need to read anything. Because I have so many books to read already. Okay, I'm sorry, I know this video is getting long, so I'll be quick. The Cool Prince by Holly Black. Everyone knows who Holly Black is. Uh, we have Phasma, another Star Wars novel. This one I have read, and it is fantastic. We have The Ruin by Devlin McTiernan. This is an Australian author as well, which is also a signed copy, because... I'm me. It is a fantastic crime book and everyone at my work absolutely loves it and I love it too. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This is a young adult book that's kind of like 
fairy tales and a girl kind of traveling through the woods that contains the fairy tales. Layer on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli. This is by the same author who wrote Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda and the Upside of Unrequited. Um, this has actually got the same characters from Love, Simon in it, so it should be good. Skyth by Neil Shusterman, and I've heard amazing things about this book. It is a fantasy book. The second one just came out, and I'm going to read this soon. The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson. Stunning cover. Pretty book. It's a fantasy, one that we should enjoy. The Dalai Lama's Cat by David Mitchie. The Queen's Rise. Rising by the The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. The Bells by Dahaniel Clayton, and I really can't wait to read this one because it sounds like it's going to be amazing. Plus, I've heard really great things about it. Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. Um, I haven't actually got through to reading the first book yet. I think this is the second book. I received this one through work, so I'm not too sure. All that I know is that I want to read this series, so I thought I may as well get the second or third or whatever book this is in it so that I can read it. The Space Between the Stars by Anne Corlett. Zenith by Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings. I haven't heard very much about this book. I've kind of been putting off buying it for a little while and I'm not too sure why, but I finally did. I just don't know when I'm actually going to read it. So this is a sci-fi novel, if I can remember correctly. Correctly. It is definitely young adults and um, mostly it's known because Sasha Alsberg is a huge booktuber and many people like her so I'm sure the book should be decent. This adorable as heck book which is called Perfect Imperfections by Alex Kearns and this one is basically filled with dogs that have disabilities and it is pure and amazing and let me just find you some. Look at Savannah! Or perhaps even Louie, or even this darling gorgeous Maya. It is pure, it is wholesome, it is everything that I didn't know that I wanted until now. Right Where right, You Left Me by Kella Devlin. Hunting Prince Dracula by Kerry Munskalko. And I also have Stalking Jack the Ripper that has the same cover. I'm pretty sure it's the same author, but I cannot confirm. And I haven't read that one yet. I'm a piece of trash. Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. I'm sure everyone's heard about Charlotte's Web. It's a classic. And if you haven't, you need to read Charlotte's Web. The newest book by Sarah Rush. So she wrote the Snow Like Ashes trilogy. So this is her new one that she's creating. which is called These Rebel Waves. And I'm already so on board with this book because I love any book to do with the ocean. Especially that is pirates. I love pirates. That reminds me, there's another book I need to show you guys. To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Christo. I read this book, I loved this book. It is a retelling of The Little Mermaid, except The Little Mermaid is the siren that only kills princes and steals their hearts and watches them die, then puts the hearts in her bedroom floor. That is who The Little Mermaid is. And then you also have the prince. The prince who all he wants to do is sail the oceans and cleanse it of all these sirens, especially the one that is out there killing princes. And all of a sudden, their worlds collide, and it is amazing. It is a brutal novel, and I loved everything about it. It was so good. Silver Stars by Michael Grant. This is the second book in that series that I can't remember the name of. Basically, it's like World War II, but women can fight. So we're probably going to kick ass. Dreamland by Sarah Dessen. I haven't actually read any Sarah Dessen books, but I've heard she's quite amazing. So... I'm gonna read Sarah Dessen. Always, Forever and Maybe by Annika Morose Rissi, and this one is stunning. Um, once again, I've heard good things about it, so hopefully it'll be great. This next one I am so excited to read. It's by R.L. Stein, you know, the Goosebumps person. And this one is Return to Fear Street, You May Now Kill the Bride. And basically it's like a curse that's on a family that whenever you get married, the husband kind of wants to just murder them. So you get to follow two perspectives of two different people in this family who are recently getting married. They're probably going to die, but we'll find out. Another huge hyped book is 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. This is a motivational book, and one of my friends is like obsessed with this guy, and a free copy came up at work, so I was like, oh, I guess I can see what it's all about. City of Crows by Chris Wormsley. This one is a fiction novel, I believe. Um, it is historical, though. It is set in 1673. Um, I kind of would have assumed it's a, a fantasy, but I won't know until I read it. Old by Michael Dunker. Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pimbra. This is a crime novel. Biography of Anne Alley. It's called Finding My Place. Anne Alley is beautiful, and I can't wait to read this. I'm pretty excited for this crime novel, which is mine, by Susie Fox. Basically, this woman's child is taken from her as soon as she gives birth to it, and it is the 
story that follows that. Dark Angels by Ron Thomas. Beyond a Darkened Shore by Jessica Leake. This adorable hardcover of Alice Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. The Trials of Apollo, The Dark Prophecy by Rick Rodden. Waterhole by Fiona Bell. Convergence by Marita Smith. Do You Like Me Now by Holly Bourne. Once by Morris Gleitzman. Virgins by Diana Gabaldon. And this was actually a really funny story. A customer came in to return this book, um, but he wasn't allowed to return it because it was like from something like six or seven months ago and he didn't want to take the book home because he knew that his wife would be mad at him because she told him to return it within the correct dates so he was literally like begging us to take this book off his hands otherwise he was like I'm gonna get in trouble otherwise she's gonna find out and I don't want to get yelled at so basically I got a book because a customer was scared of his wife and I think in all fairness I would be scared too. The absolutely adorable story by Lani Taylor, Night of Cake and Puppets. And Lani Taylor is like such a beautiful and fantastic author. I will read absolutely anything by her. The Tall Man by Phoebe Locke. And I'm actually very intrigued by this. It is a thriller novel that is a YA and I've heard crazy things about what this story is based upon. I really think I'm getting into crime. Um, I really strangely, without judging me as a character, you guys, really am into watching those really screwed up, like, murder documentaries at the moment. So when I read a crime novel, like, I am looking for that shock factor. I don't want to see, like, bad stuff happen. I want to be like, oh my god, this is crazy. How can someone even think about writing this? Because I just like that shock factor. Now we have A Dog's Journey by Bruce Cameron. I watched A Dog's Purpose. And I cried my eyes out, so we'll see how I'll go with that one. Where the Light Gets In by Lucy Dillon. Mun Mun by Jesse Andrews. Jesse Andrews wrote that other book, Me, Earl, and the Dying Girl. And then he goes and writes this book, Mun Mun. What is this title, first of all? And secondly, this book is so strange. So basically, it's set in a world where you are the size of your wealth. So right now, I would be an ant. But there are people out there who are the size of giants and, and big buildings, skyscrapers. And you get our main characters who want to work their way up in the world. They want to go from the size of an ant next to me into this giant dinosaur, basically. The Walking Fire by Anthony Ryan. And I really do want to read this. I love dragons. Love dragons. This is The Invasion, which is the second book in the Greyland by Peter O'Goulon. This is a really wicked series. If you guys haven't read it, you need to read The Call, which is the first one. Um, it is basically around Irish folklore about like fairy circles and stuff like that but it's such a cool concept and it's quite a dark and twisted book but like you really enjoy it. The Memory of Fire by Callie Bates. Falling Short by Lex Colton and look at this cover like it's the simplicity like it is an, an advanced readers copy still but like I just love it I love that kind of makes me want to grab a glass of wine too. The Twits by Roald Dahl. I love Roald Dahl and I love these covers as well. Like, I don't know when they started looking so cool, but my editions from when I was younger are so ugly and battered. Bones Land by Brendan Lawley. The Hollow Tree by James Brogdon. I am actually really excited for this next one. It is written by Ava Delaria, who wrote Love Letters to the Dead, and I absolutely love Love Letters to the Dead, so I'm pretty excited for In Search of so this one is a love story, it is a young adult book, it comes out in May, oh my god, it's coming out this month. It's probably out, it's probably out now, but I'm very excited for this one, and I really, really, really should read it soon. But will I? Sweet Adversity by Cheryl Gwyther. The Survival Game by Nikki Singer. Oh, my books are falling, so I'm just gonna... Oh shit. Okay guys, I'm sorry, I know this video is going on for so long, we're almost done. We have The Most Extraordinary Boy, The Most Extraordinary Novel, The Colour of B. Larkham's Murder by Sarah J. Harris. This one is really cool, um, it came with a decoration kit that had dead birds, so I have dead birds hanging in my room now. But it's really colourful and fun, it's not as gross as it sounds. Um, we also have Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. I am going to be reading Red Rising, I'm starting Red Rising today, and I'm just realising that I'm going to have to read this giant book eventually. This is like book four, but still, it's it's huge, huge. The Alchemist by Michael Scott, and I have heard amazing things about this, so I really, really do want to get around to reading it. Um, hopefully, I will enjoy it. Then we also have two Tim Winton books. We have Breath, which is going to become a movie soon, and also Cloud Street, which is a TV show. So it works out wonderful, because I get to read these before I watch these. So you guys have my 87 book book haul, and um, that really escalated very quickly. I don't think I'm ever going to come 
come back here with a book haul so big because I am on strict limitations now. I am not spending money. I am not going to be buying any more books and I'm going to try to behave with the amount of like books that I bring home because like if these piles fell on me right now, I would actually injure myself. These are heavy books. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and I want you guys to support me on this one. And um I'm dragging this video out longer than I probably need to. So hopefully I'll be back with another video again soon. Until then, let me know your opinions on these books. Tell me what's good, tell me what's bad, so I can kind of arrange where they sit in my TBR. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys have been reading lots of great books and everything has been great. And I will hopefully see you guys again soon. Bye! Hey guys, it's Chilly. You know, that girl that said she'd go back to posting videos regularly and then just never did.